You are under arrest. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have a right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed for you. Do you understand these rights if they've been read to you? How many of you have heard that when watching a U.S. TV show about police or criminal action or perhaps a movie? That's called, they're called the Miranda rights. How exactly did they start? There's a lot more to them than just that brief statement that the police give. If you read the full Miranda rights, it says you have a right to have an attorney present before and during questioning, etc., etc. But it's quite interesting. So where did those rights come from? Let's have a look at the Miranda warning. Most of us have never heard of Ernesto Miranda. Yet in 1963, this faceless man would prompt the passage of a law that has become an integral part of all arrests. Here's how it came to pass. In 1963, following his arrest for the kidnapping and rape of an 18-year-old woman, Ernesto Miranda was arrested and placed in a Phoenix, Arizona police lineup. When he stepped down from the gallery of suspects, Miranda asked the officers about the charges against him. His police captors implied that he had been positively identified as the kidnapper and rapist of a young woman. After two hours of interrogation, Miranda confessed. Miranda signed a confession that included a typed paragraph indicating that his statement had been voluntary and that he had been fully aware of his legal rights. But there was a problem. At no time during his interrogation had Miranda actually been advised of his rights. The wheels of justice had been set in motion on a highly unbalanced axle. When appealing Miranda's conviction, his attorney attempted to have the confession thrown out on the grounds that his client hadn't been advised of his rights. The motion was overruled. Eventually, Miranda would be convicted of both rape and kidnapping charges and sentenced to 20 to 30 years in prison. It seemed like the end of the road for Miranda, but it was just the beginning. Miranda requested that his case be heard by the U.S. Supreme Court. His attorney, John J. Flynn, submitted a 2,000-word petition for a writ of certiorari, judicial review, arguing that Miranda's Fifth Amendment rights had been violated. In November of 1965, the Supreme Court agreed to hear Miranda's case. The tide was about to turn. After much debate among Miranda's attorneys and the state, a decision in Miranda's favor was rendered. Chief Justice Earl Warren wrote in his Miranda v. Arizona opinion, The person in custody must, prior to interrogation, be clearly informed that he has the right to remain silent and that anything he says will be used against him in courts. He must be clearly informed that he has the right to consult with a lawyer and to have a lawyer with him during interrogation, and that if he is indigent, a lawyer will be appointed to represent him. In the wake of the U.S. Supreme Court's ruling, police departments across the nation began to issue the Miranda warning. As for Miranda himself, his freedom was short-lived, he would be sentenced to 11 years in prison at a second trial that did not include his prior confession as evidence. Miranda was released in 1972, and he bounced in and out of jail for various offenses over the next few years. On January 31, 1976, Miranda was stabbed to death during a Phoenix bar fight. The suspect received his Miranda warning from the arresting police officers and opted to remain silent. Due to insufficient evidence, he would not be prosecuted for Ernesto Miranda's murder. So there you have it. Because a fellow was not told what his rights were, but was given a statement to sign that he knew what his rights were, well, there's the rest of the story. So that's why we get that warning. Not we, but in the U.S. they get that warning. Um, 
I believe England and Canada and most of the Crown uh, countries have some sort of a statement that's giving. It's not the Miranda rights, but basically you're told that anything you say could be used against you. And if I think in England they say if you fail to mention something that you later use in court for your defense, um, cause issues. <laughs> so, quite interesting how Ernesto Miranda, who was apparently not really that nice of a fella, was the one behind the reason why now, when you're arrested in the United States, you're Mirandized, as they call it. You're given your Miranda warning. And if you are not given that warning and you're questioned and put through the ringer, basically the charges against you can actually even be thrown out. Uh, so it's a pretty important step in the American justice system now that a person being arrested and charged with a crime be read their Miranda rights. All right. Well, you've been arrested. You've been given your rights. You've remained silent, although you might make a comment, I guess. Your punishment? I sentence you to listening to a groaner. Well, back in the days of soda fountains, a gorilla walked into a corner drugstore and sat down at the fountain. The fellow working behind the counter asked him what he wanted, and the gorilla said, I'll have a sundae, please. So the fountain attendant whipped up a nice ice cream sundae for him, served the gorilla, and according to the sign behind the bar, it said a sundae was 50 cents. So the guy behind the bar said, well, you need to pay me for the sundae. Well, the gorilla pulled out a $10 bill and handed it to the fellow. The fellow went to the cash register to ring it up, and he thought, well, he's a gorilla, what does he know about money? So, he took out a dollar from the till, he put 50 cents in, and ate 50 in his own pocket. He went back, handed the gorilla a dollar. The gorilla looked at it and looked up at the guy, kind of questioning, and the fellow says to him, We don't get many gorillas in here. And the gorilla responded, well, I wouldn't think so at $9 a Sunday. <laughs> that's a bad one. But, that's the punishment you get for committing the crime, so... Until next Tuesday, when we have Tuesdays with the Pilgrim, you take care, stay safe, God bless.